Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Season 3, Episode 1 of Amphibia. So yeah, for those of you who didn't watch all of the afterthoughts of uh, the Season 2 finale, uh, surprise, <laughs> we are going right into Season 3 because honestly, like, I I've said it before, but the reason why I, I usually take a break between seasons is to avoid burnout, right? It's usually so that I don't get burnt out on a series and start to, like, need more breaks or start to resent the series and start to lose interest or whatever. Um, but the thing is, with Amphibia, after how strong Season 2 was, and especially that finale, True Colors, um, I need to see more. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. It's it's like um, it's the same thing that uh, I I just I can't wait. I was thinking of saying something, but I'm not sure if I should right now. <laughs> um, spoilers. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, it's like I just I don't want to wait. I don't want to. Uh, hold off anymore for this uh for this series now as i said last time we might take a break at some point like maybe mid-season or something um that's always possible still in case i do feel like it is starting to get to me a little bit um but for now at least we are going straight into season three and this was interesting to get the episodes for so i got all the episodes downloaded ahead of time um but the the website i use Kim Cartoon, um, to get all the episodes, you know, for sake of ease with the reactions, um, it, it, it mislabeled the episodes. It was like labeling the segments instead of the episodes, and then some, but then for some of them it was labeling the entire episode, and it's like, I, I, I actually had to look at the episode titles just to make sure I knew what I was, you know, downloading so I could label them right in my folder. Um, and, and don't mind, don't don't worry about it, I've forgotten pretty much all of them already. <laughs> Despite me only, like, recording this, like, what, a couple days after I recorded the finale of Season 2 and everything, I, I, I downloaded the Season 3 episodes pretty much right after I, I finished Season 2. And yet I've already forgotten them. After only, like, what, a couple days. <laughs> um, it, it's funny. Because it's like, it, it shows how terrible my memory is, but also how, kind of how I was, like, looking at them. Like, I was only using the titles for the sake of matching them with the episodes I was downloading. I wasn't actually paying a lot of attention to what the, the title said. So, like my mind wasn't focused on trying to remember what they were saying or like trying to think about like what the what puns or whatever there would be in there so it's like my mind just didn't connect with the idea of remembering them and that's really interesting actually there's a really interesting look at my at, at my brain <laughs> um but yeah so la last time on the season two finale i i think saying shit went down is a bit of an unfair understatement because just 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 wording it that shit went down doesn't even begin to describe how insane that finale was um the episodes leading up to it were great as well but the finale like was something really like special in that regard um and like like you you try to compare it to the season one finale and it's like it's it's not comparable 
And it's weird because it's like I, I didn't expect it to have this massive of a jump to the point where we're having we're having a basically war for the entirety of Amphibia breaking out. We have multiple betrayals and just kind of realliances. And on top of all of that, Marcy is impaled by Andreas and presumably killed as Anne and the Planters are transported through the portal to Los Angeles in Anne's realm while Sasha and Grimes stayed behind. It's like three different, like, three different ways of, of the trio being separated. Anne went back to their world. Marcy is presumably killed. And Sasha is, I guess, a rebel leader now, basically, the equivalent of. Andreas is fully taking over Amphibia. I mean, he was already in charge of Amphibia. I mean, he was the king. But he's really taking over now. To a very horrible degree. And the question is, with Anne and the Planters in her world... Are we going to have a split focus with this season, or, or are we going to focus entirely on Anne and them? Because if, if we have just an entire singular focus with Anne and the Planters, that's going to raise a lot of questions about what's going on in Amphibia with Sasha and everything. And I assume by some point they're going to go back for obvious reasons. Um... But how are they going to get back? The box didn't go through the portal with them. It landed right in front of the portal and the portal closed. They don't have the box. How do they get back? I, I just... I don't know how this is going to go from here. But I'm really excited. But I'm also worried. I'm excited because this... This has gotten, like, exceptionally good. From when I initially dropped it and everything, like coming back to this series, it started off getting pretty good in season one, but season two, that consistent level of high quality episodes, and by the end, it's just like, it's exceptional. I wouldn't put it on the level of Owl House, though. I still stand by that. But it's still, it has improved so drastically, nonetheless. Um, but who knows, this final season might might change that. It might start to have it come towards the level of stuff like Owl House. It's possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to depend on where it goes. But my worry, my concern, is that the series is going to feel different. And I, I don't know if this is the, if this is actually the case, but with focus in the human world and and we're probably going to focus on some human characters like Anne's family and stuff i'm kind of afraid that we're going to it, that the series is going to start feeling different and possibly not in a good way but i don't know i i don't know what to expect I, it just admittedly i can't say I, I i can't say that i really have too much to go on from here on out uh, as with before there are a couple things that i know exist basically um but i don't know any context behind them or any information about them it's just like i i just know these things happen slash exist and it's very few at this point it's actually like maybe two things um and it's just, and I'm not counting like the obvious, like the obvious of, oh, Anne's parents are going to be involved in the story to some degree. It's like, that's so blatantly obvious. Um, 
I, I think that's pretty much guaranteed, 100%. The, the question more goes, in, goes into right now, um, what else is going to happen and how are they going to get back to Amphibia? So uh, the, with a couple things that I know, it's like I'm just questioning where everything's going to go in this season. And how how consistently focused is it going to be? I, I That's another thing I'm really worried about and kind of don't want. I don't want just a bunch of slice of life bullshit in the human world. After everything that happened, I feel like Anne's priority has to be to get back. And that her mind has to remain on the stuff with Sasha and Marcy and, and Andreas and everything. I feel like going into slice of life stuff here would hurt the quality of things because it would feel completely out of place and honestly just kind of mean-spirited after everything that happened and with all that has to be on Anne's mind all the worry and all the fear and concern I feel like it would be mean-spirited to have her just kind of ignore that for even just an episode to focus on fun slice of life bullshit in the human world. I don't know. It could be it, it could be done well. It's possible, I guess, but that that kind of shit can, concerns me cuz it's the final season and like they've got to wrap things up. They can't, they don't, really don't have time to waste. There's only 18 episodes instead of 20 this season. They don't have time to waste on random bullshit. Um, season 2 could get away with that a little more because it, there was a little bit more, like, within the context of the series, of the plot, there was time that they had to wait for. Um, so there's at least precedence for that in season two and obviously much more in season one but in season three it would just feel out of place and wrong to have them dicking around while amphibia their loved ones their friends their family are in danger it would feel really wrong in my opinion so i'm hoping we get none or at least very very little of that and any we might get, I hope, is very uh, well handled. Let's put it that way. Um, because I am, I am just, I'm very concerned about that, and because I, I, I've seen shows do bad stuff like that if if they're not careful. So, so. Uh, we're gonna get into this first episode. We are only doing the first episode today. Um, we could have done more, sure. I could have just gone to the thing we were doing where it's like, oh, we'll get to as many as we can, just whenever I feel it's right to end off. Um, but no, today we're just, we are just doing episode one of the season. I think that it's, a, it, it's how we should start the season. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to expect from the episode. I don't know what to, uh, think going forward. So we're just gonna kinda, we're just gonna have to see. Like I said, I couldn't wait for this. Um, not only taking a break between seasons, but I couldn't even wait to record more. Only waiting a couple days after I recorded the last uh, bit. <laughs> so yeah, that tells you how invested I have become in this series. So yeah. Um, that being said, let's just get into this and hope for the best. So. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after phase black, then phase back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, this was a, it was a good opening episode. Um, double length, by the way. I, I did notice that. Um, it didn't entirely, it, it didn't entirely quell my fears, though. Um, 
like like Anne very clearly showed the intention and drive to get back to Amphibia and, and save everyone and, you know, stop Andreas and all. Like, all of that's good, but it also kind of gave the impression that there would still end up being some slice of lifey stuff to this. And I'm just... I'm not sure what I'm going to think about that. Because it's like, while we... Definitely, well, this episode definitely was, you know, still very important and, and driven to the story. There was some slice of lifey aspects to it. And I just feel like, I understand that Anne's happy to be home and that she wants to show the planters her world now and everything. I, I understand that after being an amphibia for, as they said in this episode, five months, she wants to enjoy her world too she wants to be able to enjoy it again before she has to deal with all of that important shit i get that but i just i don't want it to you know feel like it's how do i put it i don't want to feel i don't want it to feel like it's kind of making light of things and having too much humor when it's a serious situation because shit's really fucking serious right now. And it's like... It's it's not really celebratory that they're back home. At, or that Anne, I guess, specifically is back home at the moment. Even with this robot that's now out to get Anne and kill her and everything. Even with all of that, it's just like... There's a lot that I feel... Needs to still be focused on and, and I, I'm just worried that it's going to do too much slice of life stuff and I, I hope it doesn't and again if it does I at least hope it's good because it would be even worse if it was bad obviously um, but this episode th this episode was good um, we got to like really meet and uh get to know Anne's parents like we had heard about her mother before because she had talked about her um but we didn't really hear anything about uh her father and right now they seem pretty pretty normal a, a bit protective maybe a little overbearing but again after Anne had been gone for five months that's kind of expected um that's kind of fair but they're also they're also willing to acknowledge that Anne has clearly gotten a lot more mature. That she has clearly grown in those five months. Not physically necessarily, but, you know, emotionally and mentally. They're willing to acknowledge this and even give her some leeway with some things because of it. And although they don't know all the details about what happened, because Anne is still hiding some stuff for some pretty important reasons, I feel. Um, it does really make me wonder about a lot of other stuff, though. Like, what's going on with Sasha and Marcy's parents? Are we going to see them? Because um, Marcy's father like got a new job, and they were planning on moving. So, look... Like, what happened with them now that when Marcy just suddenly disappeared because the last thing that we can presume the last thing that she ever said to them was that they were ruining her life and that and then she ran out of the house and it's like they never saw her again since then and it's like you have to imagine like how fucking scared and like just how much they blame themselves for that. Like, you got to imagine, there's got to be some massive guilt in there. Even if they don't necessarily think what they did was wrong, they're still going to feel that way. Because they, they're going to feel like they drove Marcy away and possibly got her killed. And they don't even know how right about that they are. And we see in here that Marcy is still... Uh, alive, but in kind of like this comatose state being uh, held in a tank by Andreas um, for plans later, basically. 
and this is some this is one of the few things i did know about that marcy was that marcy survived the impalement um i don't entirely know where this goes though again there's still a couple things i know about for the future but like very little like there's like maybe two three things <laughs> It, it's it's very minimal and again i don't know the context behind anything so uh but we see that andrea sends this robot this advanced uh frobo i guess you could say to Anne's world to kill her because he feels she's the only one who can stop his conquest um because i guess of her powers although as we see in the episode she still doesn't know how to control them and it seems to mostly just come out when she feels someone she cares about is in danger um, but the fact that she still has the powers is interesting because I thought it was just because she was connected to the stone from before. Then now the stone's in a completely different dimension. It's yet it's she still has the powers within her. So I'm I'm thinking like the stone maybe like the energy went inside her and stayed there. So the energy is still within her even to this point. The most interesting part about it, though, is, is when she noted that it doesn't feel right to use the powers. It feels wrong, which is interesting. Um, and, and mind you, like this goes beyond just the fact that she can't handle using up all that energy and it makes her pass out afterwards. It's beyond that. She feels like it's very clear that her, her feelings are more geared towards something nefarious. And so I'm wondering what the specifics of that is uh, especially considering it you know these powers came from the calamity box which all we know of right now besides i guess giving these powers the only other thing we know that it does is you know open portals between dimensions why is something like that called the calamity box like seriously that seems like a bit of an exaggerated title for something that just opens dimensional doorways and can dole out powers. It, it, it just seems like they're, they're, it, it's more of a dark, frightening, mysterious name that doesn't really explain the, the little bit of stuff we know about it right now. So, I'm wondering about that as well. Um... But yeah, we didn't get too much in this episode in terms of like super new stuff, just kind of getting the base introduction to Anne's parents and kind of just bringing in the bringing the planters into this world and getting them to like experience stuff like, you know, noodle dishes like ramen, which I, I like ramen too. I, I don't think I've ever actually had like a more authentic bowl of ramen like we saw there. Um, the ramen I usually get are like the little uh, packets you get in the store for like a quarter. <laughs> um, that, that's the ramen I'm used to. I, I don't think I've ever had authentic ramen. I've had, I've had authentic sushi, but I don't think I've ever had authentic ramen. And so that, I, I know there's places that uh, are around me that have that, so I just haven't gotten it to this point. So... Um, but yeah, I'm very interested to see where this goes. And I'm very interested to see how Anne's parents uh, react once they do find out about all the stuff she's still keeping hidden. Um, also, I, I just want to say this is a very minor thing, obviously. But the, the, the little moment when, you know, Anne puts the music up to the speakers and everything to, you know, drown out the noise they're going to make fighting the robot... Just the moment when, when her parents begin, like, rocking out to the music is fucking adorable. It is, like, it is, I don't know how intentional it was, but it is really fucking cute. Like, I, I don't know why, just the idea of, like, these two seemingly normal parents who, are, who, who aren't, like, any, who seem like they're just, no, again, normal. They're average parents, um gotta be like what 40s maybe based on Anne's age and everything 
I, I would guess they're probably like in their 40, early 40s, maybe late 30s. Yeah, yeah, maybe late 30s. Either way, to see them just like absolutely rocking out to this like hard rock metal song like that is fucking amazing. It's it's adorable, it's hilarious, and it's it's pretty pretty badass. And, and for them to blatantly say that they love that song, it's like the fact that they love that kind of music is just awesome. Because that's the kind of music I tend to love. I, I love rock, I love metal, uh, punk, pop punk, that kind of stuff. That, that's my kind of music too. So it's like seeing, seeing these, again, average, ordinary looking parents just rock out to that in the middle of a store is amazing. <laughs> it was so fucking cute. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, I've seen what, uh, the mother looked like before. Like, I've just randomly seen images of her online. Uh, I don't think I've seen what the father looked like before, though. Or if I have, I just didn't remember. Um, the mother obviously looks like an older version of Anne. That doesn't surprise me at all. It's like, that's, that's a typical thing for a lot of cartoons, I feel. Um, in real life... Parents and children don't often look that similar. It's actually really rare that they do. Um, there, there's usually notable differences. Like, I don't look anything like my mom, or my dad for that matter. N neither does my sister or brother. So it's like... <laughs> I, I think it, it's just a cartoon thing. It's like to make it super obvious and everything that, you know, she's her mom, so they have to look alike. It, it's just, it's a little silly sometimes. Um, the dad is so freaking ordinary looking. Like, he, he's the most ordinary looking, like, character, I think, in this series so far. <laughs> um, like, Anne is pretty, pretty ordinary looking. Uh, her hair is pretty wild and, uh, and just big. Um, but she's, she looks like an ordinary teen girl outside of that. Um, but her, 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 her father really looks ordinary. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that a little bit more is developed with her parents that we see, get to see like some more diverse interests that they have and, uh, things, just personality things about them and all. Um, because this episode, again, it, it just kind of gave us the base introduction to them without, like, really going into everything. Um, but I, I just, I, I'm just wanting to know more, you know? I just, I want to know more about them. Um, but again, I also don't want the episodes to focus so heavily on Slice of Life stuff and all that it ignores the main plot that is in, very important to keep focused on at this point uh but we'll see we'll see uh again i'm definitely interested we got 18 episodes to get through this haul so we'll see how it goes uh in the meantime uh tell me in the comments below what did you think of season three episode one of amphibia and for now i'm connie and i'm signing off see y'all next time